Hi, you guys, I'm back. So part two, like I told you. So after confronting my sisters in regards to them being the ones going around keeping the slanderous tactics going, um, so my sisters called, it's two of them, individually in different time frames. One called first and the other one called like two days later, I believe. And I didn't think that she was going to call. So my first sister that called, she was stating that she didn't know that was going on. She didn't hear none of that type of stuff. And she said she came to me after I had told her in regards that, yeah, we, I was being harassed by unknownly people. And I was like, and she was the one that was there that witnessed more of the tactics that was being placed against me. I said, well, you seen the things about the police report of us making one and I go up there and there's one not there. You seen about the guy talking about he know me and I don't know nobody in this area. She was the one who actually witnessed these things, but I don't know. And I said, the thing that hurts me most is you're the one seeing it. So behind my back, I would expect you to say, yes, people are messing with her. Like stick up for me because she said well how was I supposed to handle it I said be in my defense when I'm not there when people are talking about me behind my back your silence is betrayal you thinking because you wasn't involved by saying anything that you're sanctioned from being classified as someone who betrayed someone silence also can fall under the line of betrayal because you're not there to tell the truth when you know the truth that's really going on because you can be an eyewitness so i've seen that happening we don't know what's going on but no she's not tripping okay so we we talked for about 30 30 to 45 minutes and i told her my side of the story um we got off the phone with no ill intent um, do I still trust him? No, because when my cousin confirmed it, my cousin also said, if you, if I wanted to talk to her mom, if I wanted to talk to her auntie, she said they all was told the same thing. And then because these are my elders, I wouldn't think that they would make stuff up against my mom and my sisters, you know, but my sisters are denying it. I talked to my other sister as well, and she's saying, I knew something was wrong, but I never went behind your back and said you was crazy. I was like, so they're just making this stuff up. I don't know. Oh, wow. I don't know why they would say something like that. That is so ridiculous. And in this situation, I never knew that anybody would come and confess to telling the truth because that's how you play the game of gaslighting gaslighting is when someone finds out the truth and you try to spin around the truth so that the person that is trying to get vindicated or trying to tell their truth is blocked right because everybody's saying i don't know or everybody's pointing the fingers so you're still left at point of nowhere but the discernment from God will tell you the truth. Before this conversation even took place, um, I kept having a discernment like, your, you know, your family is not vindicating you. Your family is talking about you. And it's crazy because I don't believe in mediums or psychics, but this, you know, I was on a social media page and someone was telling me, you know, it's your family, have a talk with them. It's time for the truth to come out. Sorry, you guys. It keeps stopping. It keeps saying phone too hot. A lot of times, it's not even that hot. I got the air conditioner on in my car, and it just stopped in mid-sentence of my video. But long story short, overall, nobody is admitting to it. Everybody's pointing the finger. I feel all of them is involved. I don't know who to believe at this time, but I do know to love people with a long wooden spoon and trust nobody. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. Trust nobody. Everybody, when it comes to the attack, a spiritual attack, a spiritual warfare, unfortunately, um, the enemy will use anybody to attack you. And for those of you that are on the other side and you're hearing things about other people, your silence is betrayal. A lot of people think like, well, I wasn't the one talking about you. But if you're the one hearing negative things being said about someone and you know deep down inside that that doesn't sound right and you don't investigate, 
that is betrayal. And if you know somebody may be going through a mental crisis, even if they thought that, I even told my sisters, I said, even if you thought that to be true, nobody came to check on me, nobody came to pray with me, nobody sent out any prayer requests, nobody sent any prayer scriptures or anything like that, but we are all people of God. The only people that came in my aid was my friends. The one they told me that was messy and that they trying to keep you away from your family. That's falsified information because the ones that came for me and took care of me was my friends. My friends were sending me um, scriptures. My friends was asking questions. My friend was friends was actually investigating what was going on so they could find their understanding, not just take my word for what's going on. So that's when I sat there and said, okay, you got to see who shows you. God will reveal to you who's for you and who was against you, who will smile on your face, but behind closed doors will talk to you. God will reveal that to you. Even in the workplace, even though there's people in there that's talking about you, there's still some people that treat me normal where I don't feel it's fake. They're still willing to try to get to know me and ask questions to try to put two and two together. There's just people in here that don't even like me, that follow me around, that can't wait till I do something wrong. They hope I do something wrong. Then there's people in there, you guys, that's falsifying and accusing me still to this day of stuff that I wasn't had nothing to do involved with. But you know how gossip truth comes to light and gossip gets spread and it gets right back to you. Everything's being said is getting told right back to me. And all I can do is keep my head up and smile. So the moral of the story is if you really pray for vindication, if you really pray for the truth to come to light, God will reveal it to you. But he's going to reveal it to you at a time when you are at the state of mind to handle the truth. If he would have told me the truth or this truth would have been revealed to me years ago, it wouldn't have went well. I probably would have had a mental breakdown or I probably would have went off probably would have went off on my family but when I heard it I didn't go off on them I called and confronted them in a calm manner so yeah they're saying this and it's like you've been hurt so much that you don't hurt anymore it was no tears shed it was just like it is what it is I still talk to them but it is I don't trust them I'm gonna be honest with them with you because it's like if it's a if it quacks like a duck, walk like a duck, what? It's a duck. So in other words, if this person looks like someone that will betray you, don't tr not to trust them, don't trust them. It's in plain sight. Don't repaint the zebra stripes when he showed you his stripes. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say. Um, uh, this was a true story. As you can tell from the details that are coming out of my mouth, I'm not falsifying um, the information that was received to me in the situations that are happening to my life. The reason why I'm bringing it on this platform because some of you guys are going through this and you're trying to find a way out. Have a conversation. You be that person to reach out. And if you don't want to be that person to reach out, keep praying on it. Um, I've been a target for... I say nine, seven, eight, ten years. It took ten years for God to work on me to the point that I can be handled the truth. So maybe your truth has not been revealed to you because God says you're not ready. Because you're not ready. You don't even know you're not ready. But when you're ready, keep praying on it. And don't stop praying until things happen. It says keep praying until change come. And then on top of that, it's another thing. It says prayer is dead without work. So work on it. Pray on it, but work on it in the same time. All right. Talk to you guys soon. I hope my testimony and my truths helped you to live a better life. All right. Keep you guys posted.